Uh, let's get to our call of the day, and that's on Microsoft today. Webbush uh, out reaffirming their buy rating on the tech giant, also raising its price target to $220. That's an upside potential, just shy of around 20% from where the stock closed yesterday. The call here seems to be all about the cloud and the acceleration and adoption that we're seeing play out today as a result of coronavirus. I also think that Microsoft uh, could potentially close the gap with its big competitor, Amazon. And Miles, uh, let's go to you first on this, just in terms of what Dan Ives, that's the analyst there at Webbush, was saying in his note, because he was basically saying that Satya Nadella and company continue to lead this transformational cloud story and that, hey, maybe we shouldn't be as worried as we once were about the big giant in there, and that's Amazon. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, Ives' point is basically uh, the, the at-home work environment that so many of Microsoft's clients have been thrust into um, can be nothing but a positive for increased adoption uh, across the cloud because you're going to have uh, more widespread needs. You now have distributed workforces. Um, you know, you can't just have everyone uh, on the same network. And so that requires, uh, you know, kind of increased features and so on and so forth. And so um, in some ways, it's kind of a straightforward view from the enterprise side of what we've heard analysts talk about when it comes to a name like a Walmart, or, or especially, of course, the canonical example would be Amazon, where they were likely to take share anyway over the coming years. But every trend that's been accelerated by at home uh, is just positive for an incumbent. And yes, of course, AWS is a direct competitor to Azure, but you know the I guess we'll call them the consumer facing side of the enterprise stack. So that's basically Office 365 and the associated stuff. You know, Amazon doesn't have that, right? That's a pure Microsoft play in an Ives' view. Every incremental uh, license or a deepening of that um, suite into any one worker's home uh, isn't positive for the company um, and for their overall strategy uh, when it comes to driving cloud adoption uh, and increasing uh, kind of that enterprise stickiness. I think it's worth noting that you know uh, growth in the cloud has been decelerating. It's still growing, but it hasn't been growing at the pace that either Microsoft or Amazon ha has been seeing. And, and so, you know, there, there's no argument to be made here about Microsoft overtaking Amazon. I don't think anybody expects that. You know, you look at the market share for Microsoft; it's still what around 17 percent or so. But but Microsoft has made some key bets that could lead to additional growth. And one being healthcare. If you'll recall, uh, last month, they launched the Microsoft um, Cloud for healthcare, and obviously seeing a huge bet um, over the last two and a half months. But the other thing that I think is going to be interesting to watch is, you know, they've been able to onboard a lot of clients who are wary of Amazon's growth, especially in e-commerce. They had that big deal that just came out with FedEx to build out their logistics system. Obviously, that was after FedEx uh, you know, ended their contract with Amazon. And there's a lot of e-commerce players out there that are likely to follow. So maybe that's something to, to look closely at and that can keep the momentum going for Microsoft, at least to, to stay alongside AWS, even if they don't overtake them in market share. I just want to rain on Microsoft's parade for two seconds. Uh, President Trump today uh, retweeted a call for uh, the federal government to stop doing business with Microsoft. It's because Microsoft has pulled back on selling facial recognition software to uh, police departments. So um, I don't know how you cannot do business with Microsoft and you cannot do business with Amazon, but uh, Microsoft does have that hanging over their head a little bit. Yeah, but we're going for it. I mean, how big a risk do you think that is to their business? Because that's a big question out there, just how serious that's going to be taken and how much, I guess, really investors or analysts are going to take that into account. I think you could. I, I think there's a believable case that Trump's uh, hostility toward Amazon did play a role in the mm -hmm. Pentagon steering that huge cloud contract away from Amazon over to who? Microsoft. So are they now going to steer it back to Amazon? I don't think so. I think President Trump can um, have a major impact if he chooses to get involved. But as we know, there's a, we, you never know if he's just saying something and then he, it's fire and forget and he never does anything about it. Or if he actually goes around the government and directs his lieutenants to uh, you know exact retribution against corporate enemies. So my guess is Trump is um, preoccupied with a lot of other things, including the 2020 campaign. And this probably won't go anywhere, but it's a risk factor. Yeah, it certainly is a risk factor. But Microsoft shares today holding on to those gains, the stock closing up just around eight tenths of a percent, uh, just above $187 a share.